The hobby of radio-controlled aircraft as a whole can sometimes struggle to appeal to the masses. I mean, after all, they are just toy airplanes. But there are significant portions of our hobby that haven't been brought mainstream despite having such unique weirdness factors about them. Without further ado, let's bounce right into the weirdest aspects of our hobby. Number 1. Helium RC Planes You probably wouldn't think that aircraft with 8-foot wingspans could fly indoors, and you wouldn't be crazy for thinking it. Someone out there did have the crazy idea to combine lighter-than-air concepts with modern radio control airplanes, and the result is pretty sweet. People have made everything from giant indoor airliners flying at a slow-motion pace to a significantly less intimidating than its full-scale counterpart, A-10. To the best of our knowledge, these aircraft aren't readily available for purchase, and finding one can be a challenge. Otherwise, we'd own a fleet of them. While not quite as innovative, another spin-off of Helium RC planes are airships. As a general rule, if someone made it full-scale, there's probably someone who made an RC version of it. Number 2. Formation Flyers These are typically disasters waiting to happen, but there's also a fair amount of people out there who have managed to make some pretty ambitious projects fly. Walter Colby's channel is a beautiful collection of things that shouldn't fly, that do. It's definitely right up our alley. On it, he has a few videos about a buddy's project where they hacked together nine different flight test looking foamies and flew it. Some attempts were more successful than others, but one thing is for certain, it looks weird as hell in the air. If we're being honest, his channel should be a category of its own. Just take a look at this dragon. How they had any control over it, we really have no idea. If you haven't seen any of his stuff, we'll leave a link to his channel in the description below. Number 3. 4D Indoor Flying if you think you've mastered forward flight, there's a whole new skill you can learn, which is basically backwards flying. Some setups range from being as simple as just using a reversing ESC, all the way to variable pitch propeller systems with thrust vectoring. The intimidation factor can be prohibitive for some, but if you're looking to get a taste of it, the Aerofly RC Simulator has a few different aircraft you can fly that are set up for 4D flight, so you can figure out if it's your thing or not. While not quite indoors, others have taken giant-scale aircraft like this Raven and given them variable pitch propellers for some seriously unique aerobatics. Number 4. Dynamic Soaring I am speed Dynamic soaring is the name given to a flying technique used by gliders to gain energy by repeatedly crossing the boundary between air masses of different velocities. The result? Insanely fast gliders that even Lightning McQueen would be jealous of. The current world record for the fastest RC plane was a dynamic soar clocking in at 564 miles per hour. Believe it or not, humans weren't the ones who figured out this concept. It actually was first done by the world's largest seabird, the Wandering Albatross. These performance-focused aircraft can cost as much as your car, but once again, you can fire up Aerofly or Real Flight and see if dynamic soaring is simulated for a fraction of the cost. Number 5. Slope Soaring Helicopters? You heard that correctly. There's people out there that slope soar helicopters. Our friend Nightflyer on YouTube has a whole video covering this if you'd like more information on it, but in his own words, it essentially works like this. Remove the motor, the motor battery, and find a nice ocean cliff or hill on a very windy day and give it a shot. You can also alternatively take off with a normal heli and go into an infinite auto rotation, but some people have even built auto gyros with no motor at all. Number 6. The FAI F7B Class Indoor Blimp Racing We're gonna be honest here, this one is about as exciting as it sounds. And if you're wondering why we're only showing one video of an F7B race, it's because it's the only one we could find. And that's probably because not even a videographer could be enticed by a turtle race. Number 7. Control Line Speed On the opposite side of the spectrum, control line speed has aircraft going at dizzying and frankly terrifying speeds. Per the AMA, the object of this event is to simply fly a prescribed distance at the fastest speed possible with a string attached. We know, this one isn't technically radio controlled, but tomato tomato. Most of these aircraft take a minimalist approach to aircraft design and are typically nitro or gas powered but advanced classes allow pulse jet engines, which can help these aircraft reach speeds of almost 200 miles per hour. To keep it safe, the line used to control these aircraft is routinely stress tested and measured, but if we're being honest, it's still terrifying to witness in person. Number 8. Combat While the flight test kids dispute this part of history, the AMA was actually the organization to popularize the concept. Competitions are regularly held, and the gist of RC combat is this. You pull a 30-foot streamer in the air, and the goal is to cut as much of your opponent's streamers while also keeping yours as together as possible. They use a point system to determine how pilots rank. 
Other spin-offs have been inspired by streamer combat, including Control Line Combat, the Kamikaze Fest held yearly known as Flight Fest, along with Full Contact Combat, which is something that's more just done among friends or enemies. Number 9. Indoor Pattern F3P F3P is essentially the indoor equivalent of F3A pattern flying, which, contrary to popular belief, is not a competition of who can design the ugliest plane. It's an aerobatic competition. The unique thing here is just how light these planes are. They look like they fly in slow motion, but we promise you, none of this footage is slowed down. There's two main components of F3P. Flying a prescribed aerobatic routine and an aerobatic music section, which is a two-minute freestyle to music. The aerobatic music component is the most common one you'll find on YouTube, and to be honest, this is the closest we'll ever get to RC ASMR videos. Number 10. Giant Scale Indoor Flyers This has to be one of our favorite categories of all time. People design incredibly massive aircraft that are meant to be flown indoors. How do they do it? Our favorite, weight savings in any way possible, without cheating by using helium. Some aircraft like this Corsair even have retracts despite it weighing not much more than a feather. Others are powered by electric ducted fans like this Antonov. So many people out there struggle to build light, but the folks who make these giant lightweight models really must be masters of their craft. On to the honorable mentions. Remember our friend Dave of Night Flyer that we mentioned earlier? He also has successfully made and flown single-bladed RC helicopters by means of balancing with a counterweight in place of the second rotor blade. He has also successfully done this with multi-rotors and even fixed-wing aircraft. He's got lots of unique outside-the-box projects on his channel, including helicopter fishing, so be sure to check him out. Auto Gyros Generally speaking, the more scaled down an RC plane is, the worse it'll fly. Anyone who's owned a small-scale autogyro knows this concept definitely applies to them. We've all seen the old Hobby King one that was a miracle if it flew for more than the length of the runway, but some people take it to the next level. Most notably, Harold Booms designed his own gas autogyro and it's pretty legit to say the least. There's also electric ones out there if you're afraid of petrol. Monocopters. Yep, these things fly. How? Sorcery. Sort of. The concept is similar to the whirling helicopter seeds we watch fall from trees. As niche as this sounds, there's actually tons of instructional videos and articles out there to help you make your own if that's something you'd be interested in. Some folks have even simplified the concept down to just Dollar Tree foam board and some basic electronics. The Magnus Effect Plane Recently, we've seen a couple videos blow up on this concept. We're not even going to bother trying to explain this concept because there's so many other videos on the subject that do a better job of it than we can. Peter Scripple and Project Air are two great resources for learning more about Magnus Effect aircraft. Powered Paragliders Ben and I have a soft spot for this one because we both got our start in the world of full-scale aviation by means of powered parachutes. RC powered paragliders, which have elliptical wings as opposed to powered parachutes which have rectangular ones, have always been available in some way for as long as we've personally been in the hobby, but they're not common to see. This is mainly because of the need for dead calm air and the ability to be excited about flying a two-channel aircraft at two miles per hour low and slow, albeit sometimes with loops mixed in and night flying. Regardless, we'll always have one in our fleet. If you'd like to see more videos like these in the future, be sure to let us know down below. But until then, go ahead and give this video a like if you think indoor blimp racing will be more exciting if the blimps were filled with hydrogen and there was a man chasing after you with a lighter. Maybe even hit subscribe as you soak in the reality that the AMA endorses a competition where people can be just outside the radius of a plane flying at 200 miles an hour, but won't allow you to fly FPV in your backyard with a tiny whoop unless it's flown light of sight. Happy landings and bounce one on for us. We'll catch you next week with a new upload. Whoa!